Hi, Greg Hughes here from 90 Second Website Builder. I want to talk to you a little bit about Google and how the search engines work with your website. Have you ever Googled something and wondered how Google decides how that content is displayed in their search engine? So for example, today I Googled uh, drag and drop website builder software and I happen to be on the first page for that phrase. And so when my website comes up, at least today, in Google, it shows this phrase, web design software drag and drop website builder program, and then it shows the URL, and then it shows this description. And I want to show you, uh, you, may, you may know this, but I want to show you how Google decides what to put in those placeholders. These are called meta tags, and they're part of your page properties. So I'm going to go to this particular page for 90 Second Website Builder, and we're going to open up the page properties by going up to page, page properties, and let's look at the meta tag section of this page. You'll notice this description, 90 Second Website Builder is a drag and drop web design program, and so on and so forth. This is the description buried in my meta tags where Google got the information so they know how to describe the website. That's probably one of the more important meta tags you want to put in here. Keywords are not used as much anymore, but you can put them in there. It's actually better to have keywords built into your content, but that's a whole different conversation in a different video. But for the sake of this video, I want you to see where Google got that description information. The other thing it did is it went to my title tag. And so in 90 Second Website Builder, that's here. And it picked up my phrase, web design software, drag and drop web design builder program. Those are things that I do have some control over. I don't have control over if Google displays it, when they display it, or at what ranking they, they display it, etc. But I do have control over what it says, and this is how we do that. Now this is just basic and you should at least have this much search engine optimization done on your web pages and on your website so that when people do find you in Google, it says something sensible. That's why it's always a good idea to make sure that you change this because when you make a new page, it just says untitled and you don't want to leave that untitled. You want it to say something sensible for your Google search. But I want to talk to you about something a little bit different. It's a tool in 90 Second Website Builder called Structured Data. Before I show you the tool, let me show you what it means. Have you ever done a Google search for something and it actually came up like this? Where we have, there's the title we just looked at and there's some description, but how does Google know to pick up this image and these ratings? This is something called structured data. And you can set up structured data for your website. You cannot control whether Google likes it or picks it up or lists it this way, but you can at least edit your website in such a way that it has the right kind of code so that you have the potential for appearing in Google like this. A lot of it depends on what your website is about, what your product is about, what kind of content you have. For things like recipes, it's really obvious to Google that it needs to be shown this way. Things that can be rated by um, customers. So how do we do that? How do we put structured data into the code of a page? Well, let me close this and we're gonna go to this home page of mine. And you'll notice that in the toolbox, there's a tool under miscellaneous called structured data. And it's really easy to use. I've drug out a structured data box onto my screen here. I'm gonna move the camera so you can see it. I've put it off to the side because it's not an object that's going to be displayed to the public. It's not something like an image or text that anybody sees. It's just a box that you put somewhere on the canvas. And I usually put it outside of the breakpoint. It doesn't matter. It's just something that adds special code to your page. To configure it, like you would imagine, we double click on it. And here's what mine looks like. The first thing the structured data asks is what type of structured data this is. And there is a set number or a limited number of things you can select from in here. The schema.org people that oversee this structured data have this pre-built list. You wanna make sure you pick the right one. In my case, I'm selling a product. So my structured data type is product. You might be a person, you know, like if you're a celebrity or a politician, then your website might be about a person or an organization or news or might be about music, might be an event. So you wanna make sure you pick the right one. In my case, it's product. In the case of the oatmeal cookies, they probably picked a recipe. Here you put your brand name, the name of your product. You also wanna be able to put a product image. Remember when we looked at the oatmeal recipe, there was a little image of the cookies. And so I wanna make sure I choose what image shows if in fact 
Google uses my structured data. Also, I have control over what goes in the description. And so I'd want to put my description in here, the same description that I had on my page properties I would type into here. Let me go get it really quick. So go to page properties and go back and get my description. I'm just going to copy it and then open up my schema.org. Let's put that description in here. There. Now, if it comes up that way, it'll read nicely. If I have a product number, product type, I can do that. Here's where I would put product rating. Now, here's where you want to be really careful. You don't want to put a product rating usually on your home page. Google doesn't look at that as being scrupulous. Product ratings should be real. They should come from real customers. They should be about a particular product, not about your home page or your entire website. So in my case, I would want product ratings to appear on the page where my product is being highlighted, maybe the order page or something like that, where I'm explaining specifically the product and I would show those customer ratings maybe on my testimonials page, but usually not on your home page or your index page. If you violate these rules or if you're not careful enough, you can actually hurt your search engine ranking. So you want to be very careful with this. You don't want to haphazardly just put something in without researching it a little bit first. So in my case, I'm going to leave this blank because this is my home page, And so I don't want Google to think I'm trying to be sneaky. And you also don't want to make up fake information. Obviously, everybody's going to want to put a five here. I want everybody to think my product rates a five, but I shouldn't do that either. I should actually calculate the ratings that my customers are giving me about the product. Maybe it's 4.7 or maybe it's three or whatever. I'd want to put the actual number in there and the number of people that I've received ratings from. So I can't, I just want to, I don't want to put, you know, 10,000 in here. And I think you can only go up to 9.99 anyway, but you'd want to put actual numbers in here. If you don't have actual numbers, please leave this blank. Otherwise it will hurt your um, search engine ranking scores. Here's the currency. If I'm selling a product, obviously there's going to be a price attached to it. So I'd put something in there. And then the item condition. This is something that um, schema.org has already built into it. When you click on this field, you'll see it says this already. So you want to make sure if, if yours is not in there, go ahead and type that in exactly as it says. If it is a new condition product, you're going to want to choose the right option there. You can find out more information about what you should put here by going to schema.org. And if you want to find out specifically about how yours should be configured, you would go to schema.org forward slash, and then you would put in the type of structured data you have. So in other words, in my case, if I want to learn more about this, I would go to schema.org forward slash product. If you have a restaurant, you'd want to go to schema.org forward slash restaurant. And then you would learn more about how your structured data is supposed to work. So it's pretty simple to do and you're done when you do this. The important thing to know is this is not something we can now go test. We can't just click OK and then go Google ourselves and watch that come up. This is something that can take time. Google may do this in a few minutes. They may do it in a few days. They may do it in a few weeks or months. And again, they may never do it because you don't have full control or even very much control over what Google decides to do about ranking your site. Google's looking for uh, content. It's got all kinds of complex things in its algorithm that decides not only where you come up, but how you show. So what I'm showing you is what you do have control over. If Google decides to rank you in such a way that they show your structured data, you at least have some say in what that looks like. And that's where the schema.org or the structured data tool comes in handy. I would highly recommend doing a lot more research on this. Be careful where you put this. Again, you want to be truthful in what you put in your schema.org structured data settings. And after you have published your site, once you've made these changes and you've published your site, there is a way for you to test it. There's a website URL you can go to to make sure you haven't made any mistakes and see any discrepancies. It's really handy. And that web address is going to show right here. It's um, it's a Google website. So you'll go to this address, search.google.com, structured data testing tool, forward slash u, forward slash zero. So you'll want to go there, run the test on your page, and make sure there's no discrepancies. And if there are, fix whatever errors there may be. So this is not the type of tool that you can see immediate results like everything else where we just click preview or publish our site and look at it. This is something that's more long-term effect and can, if used wisely, can really help you in ranking the websites that you build with 90 Second Website Builder.